Now, to some international news, of course, President Donald Trump has picked Senator to, repli to replace you as uh, envoy. The Senator is, of course, Kyle McCutter of Downstate Lebanon. And this is also a story that is making headlines in our standard. And the funny thing is, this Senator can actually speak Swahili fluently, which, which is very, you know, makes people un ask questions. It comes at a very interesting time when, of course, we're dealing with the whole Miguna Miguna issue. <laughs> what do you think about this? <laughs> well, his ability to speak Swahili <laughs> means nothing yeah. uh, in terms of uh, his qualification. But I think it's because he's had um, a stint in Kenya uh, in the past and having interacted with communities. In fact, I saw one of the things that he was saying in terms of experience is his ability to negotiate with the tribal chiefs. I'm not <laughs> sure who those are. <laughs> almost condescending, yeah. Yeah? Uh, but I think I saw something uh, like that and therefore having been uh, in Kenya I think as a missionary or a spy, I'm not sure which, or, uh, which is which, uh, perhaps that is why he's been uh, picked. But I think the bigger issue is in terms of Kenya and US uh, relations. You have to remember Godek has been uh, heavily involved in um, behind the scenes mediation efforts, mm -hmm. number one, to bring um, the NASA leadership and the Jubilee administration together. He had even gone ahead, you know, to lead those uh, efforts, even creating some kind of agenda uh, for the national conversation. And I think what is key, of course, for this uh, new person who is coming in is to take that agenda. I think that is part yeah. of what Godek will be uh, handing over. The other question, of course, is uh, if you look at Godek and compare him with uh, Mr. Randberger, who went, uh, you know, ahead of him, we've always seen that the U.S. Um, envoys in Kenya have always played a critical role, and part of it, of course, it depends on the um, political philosophy, so to speak, because you remember Randberger was quite um, confrontational, just to the least, and he was. Act I saw him addressing political rallies in Kenya. Yeah. Godek, of course, has used uh, quiet, uh, you know, diplomacy, but effective in the sense that uh, he scored uh, big wins uh, during his uh, tenure that has now come yeah. to an end. So it remains to be seen what kind of an approach that the new... Uh, it's Ma 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 Makata. Maka Maka Kyle Makata. Yes. Ma <laughs> yeah, the approach that he will take in terms of enhancing the U.S. and uh, Kenya relations. You have to remember it's been improving uh, in the recent past, and I think we have seen some concessions u.s companies are also uh getting uh, you know huge contracts uh, within the country mm -hmm. and you have to remember that when he comes here he represents the interests of the u.s uh, government yeah. so it depends on the path that he chooses uh to use all right and and of course you know this is not the only uh, replacement we are seeing let's not forget about rex tillerson mm -hmm. that actually he was fired when he was in kenya so what exactly is donald trump trying to do He's trying to do his job. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, because it is uh, the prerogative of uh, President Trump to uh, handle all such uh, key uh, appointments yeah. as stipulated in the American law. And uh, going by that, I think it is proper that um, he makes such uh, decisions and appointments. So Ambassador-designate uh, Kyle mm -hmm. is uh, welcome uh, uh, you know, in Kenya. And we know very well that the different personalities uh, always bring out the best of each ambassador. Yeah. You know, whether it was uh, from the times of uh, Ambassador Prudence Bushnell and all these others uh, up to now, uh, I think it is their individual personalities, how they understand issues. Uh, different now for Ambassador, incoming Ambassador Kyle is that, uh, yes, it's been documented that he has dwelt in Kenya before, he's yeah. domiciled here before. And uh, he has, he's a bit familiar with the ground, the politics, etc., uh, and whatnot. However... As doctor said, he can yes. negotiate with the tribal... No, <laughs> it, you know, it is, it, it, it is disappointing that uh, such a remark would be made, mm. or such a statement, because with my four eyes, I have not set them on any tribal chief yeah. in Kenya. <laughs> so I don't know which other Kenya they are talking about, mm -hmm. unless it is uh, some other quarters or way back. <laughs> Beyond that... As one time Secretary of State Henry Kissinger once put it quite <laughs> eloquently, is that America has no permanent friends, only has permanent interests. When Ambassador Designate uh, Kyle mm. uh, comes to Kenya now, hands over his papers, and then becomes ambassador, he will be doing only one job not to represent and take care of the interests of Kenyans, yeah. to take all care of all the interests 
of Americans. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, yes, they'll be, uh, you know, expanding uh, money here and helping programs here and there, whether it's in health, matters HIV and AIDS, whether it's matters democracy and good governance, uh, etc. But in the end, it is the American interest that they are putting forward. All right. There's a very interesting story on page six of the standard, and scientists have invented a male contracep contraceptive pill. <laughs> Dr. Savio, you're laughing. Maybe I'll just start with you. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> um, I don't. Uh, <laughs> to appear, it's a very tricky uh, one. Eh? Well, uh, but but <laughs> and, uh, to address the issue, yeah. uh, I think traditionally we have always seen like uh, contraception is an issue of the you know family planning as if it is a problem of the woman in the family. Mm. So I think it's a good thing men have to be involved in the conversation. <laughs> yes. So I would I would support that in terms of acceptance and uptake. We know there has always been resistance, men feeling they don't want to take responsibility, and therefore women, it ends up becoming the problem of the woman. <laughs> that, you know, why did you get pregnant? Why were you not using a contraceptive? It's supposed to be a conversation, which I feel, of course, uncomfortable engaging in, but as, <laughs> as a person, you know, as a person, yeah. of course, it's something I normally discuss. I would discuss at a family level with my wife yeah. because it is important. It's a conversation we are supposed to have. Uh, th there is more of a social cultural issue in terms of socialization of men that they actually don't think it is uh, something they are supposed to be involved in. It's something they are supposed to do. And, you know, it touches on uh, some of these things because uh, when you talk about even vasectomy and why there has been a challenge with the uptake, mm -hmm. is because anything that touches on a man's uh, sexuality, yeah. it's normally, uh, should I call it contentious, eh? Uh, mm -hmm. In that sense, and therefore, it, 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 in terms of uptake, that would be the problem. Yeah. They can come up with all these, but are mm -hmm. convincing men that it is also important that you take the initiative. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's all I'll say about <laughs> that. Do, do, you, one, do you think men will actually agree to this? Because as you said, there's a social cultural you know, issue, mm -hmm. not only in the country, but worldwide. So will, actually, will men agree they, to this? They are trying to come up with something that uh, the boy child can swallow. <coughs> uh, and uh, it's interesting that this news is coming to us on a good Friday. I don't know whether it was intended to be good. But um, in the end, family matters should be handled well at the family level. Mm -hmm. And uh, people want now, moving forward, to know how does it work, or what are its implications. But uh, we know very well, for instance, we know that uh, other cultural practices have been very hard to fight, whether it's FGM, etc. Even though we know very well that they are very bad, they need to be fought, yeah. they are still ongoing. Mm. Now, looking at this uh, male uh, family planning uh, you know, device or tool or pill, device. whichever, <laughs> whichever it is. You're it calling will be, it a device. Okay. It, will be, it will be very interesting to see mm -hmm. how cultural perspectives are going to affect it. Yeah. Because there are those communities uh, that will want to weigh in on this, the elders in communities who will want to fight it, etc. So it's a matter that uh, the Ministry of Health mm. will want to have a, a very clear conversation. And we know very well uh, the place of public participation. So they may want to use that platform <laughs> to have various discussions, especially at community levels, yeah. and see how this works. But yeah. One thing that your guess is just as good as mine, it is not going to be received with the uh, allulations <laughs> and party Speaking of receiving, it, let, me, let me just read something <laughs> out for you. How it is used, oral, the pill can be swallowed with water just like any other tablets, or it can be taken by mixing with food for a drink. So Just, just, just for the record, yeah. If I understand how it works, I would not have a problem. Like I said, men also have to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just a problem of them. Family planning is actually, a, it's family, it's mm -hmm. not one individual. If I understand how it works and it doesn't have any side effects on me, I would definitely uh, <laughs> yeah. consume it. That is the only convincing I will need. Yeah. But then the other thing, is it really you know, in the country yet or it is just... No, no, um, no, no. Yeah. It's something that has exactly. been it's, invented. It, yeah, so in the meantime, we can work on uh, helping men appreciate that they also have to take uh, mm -hmm. responsibility. I think that would be the way that... Uh, Which is very tricky, to be Good honest. To that he's looking forward to it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, welcome. Yes, and uh, it's, 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 it's a new perspective. Yeah. Which is very interesting. It's going to elicit so much debate, uh, whether it's online and on uh, various other platforms. Yeah. And uh, moving forward, actually, it's a debate that so much is going to be written about and said about. Uh, but nonetheless, 
time has come where I think responsibilities, tasks, decisions need to be continually shared by individuals who are affected by those decisions. All right, and let's not forget that it can be mixed with food. So even <laughs> if you don't want to take it, let's not forget there are people who are crazy the devil in is this a liar. world. <laughs> Look, um, <laughs> On Good Friday. <laughs> yes. You see, uh, uh, consent here is very important. Mm. When uh, somebody, say, wants to do that mixing with food without your understanding, knowledge, and consent, then uh, there are lots of other violations. You, that you are the one who is supposed to mix it with your food, <laughs> eh? For ease no, no, that, uh, not, it's not somebody, no, not to, somebody else to, to mix. No. Uh, no. Is, it, is it a way of no. just lying there's to yourself a, that you're eating food? There's a place of mischief. <laughs> 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 All right, but I, I want us to move on to page 26. Uh, now, road project worth 1.7 billion shillings has been abandoned by contractors because of non-payment issues. That is the, the main reason. Now, the highlights, uh, 60 road projects have been abandoned by contractors due to lack of payment. The project, of, of course, was worth 4.9 billion shillings awarded to contractors in the current financial year have also stalled with only, only project valued at 2 billion completed, 1.2. I think uh, <clears throat> I have some thoughts uh, on that. I'm not sure the specific roads that are being referred to. Yeah. But I think I have been cons uh, concerned. I am based in Westlands and I have seen, uh, you know, some roads that have been under construction for the last five years. And I normally see the const uh, con contractor will come to the site for about two weeks uh, with the equipment, move a bit of, uh, you know, soil here, yeah. and then disappear for about uh, three months. Then they will come back. The story seems to imply that, the, you know, the problem is on the side of the government, not uh, paying the contractors. But I would actually also want to focus on the contractors who normally actually just appear on site because I've been trying to follow up why especially yeah. Kenya urban you know the Kura eh? Kenya urban roads authority I think they are not very effective in terms of supervising the projects you remember the roads at Upper Hill mm -hmm. it took so long there were complaints because it was an important road leading to Kenyatta National Hospital patients would actually die being stuck in traffic because they couldn't get to the hospital yeah. and when you try and follow up you discover it was an issue with a contractor who had so many other contracts all over and therefore would uh, you know would not prioritize this. Eventually, of course, the issue was resolved. But you have seen so many roads, especially within the urban center. And that is why I'm saying this problem seems to be a problem of Kura, where the contractor will move on, uh, move to the site, just do a bit of work, maybe for a week or two, raise a certificate, and of course get payment because that is how it's normally structured. Then disappear. Next time when he needs some money, it does that. I think in terms of supervision, and that is where I'm actually taking this to the doorstep of Kura. I'm not sure whether those specific roads are, you know, specifically uh, fall under the, you know, urban uh, areas yeah. as it has been called. But I think in terms of supervision, there has been laxity on the side of Kura, and I hope actually this message gets to them uh, because there are so many uh, abandoned projects around the city by the way if you just go and you, you see especially now that we have uh, the rains and the damage they cause to the roads we have seen so many of those and if they would just be a bit more effective in supervising then you'd see a bit more completion. Jealous. Well I know <clears throat> that in this country we love elephants but white elephants are things that we don't need mm -hmm. whether it is whatever kind of infrastructure roads etc it is important and it should be a national concern that such issues happen. When a project is being launched, when it has been budgeted for, yeah. then there is a claim later on, a year later, a few months later, that there's insufficient funds to cater for that. Then one wonders, what happened midway? Where is it that the funds intended for the payments of such kind of project? Uh, disappear to. Now, Parliament, the Parliamentary Committee needs to probe, probe, probe this. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, it is also important yeah. that the Ministry of Transport gives a sound reason mm -hmm. or explanation as to why such kind of things continually happen in various parts of the country, yeah. not just that road alone. Mm. And given that this money is funded by the Exchequer, it is the public that finance this, whether it's money that has been advanced to Kenya by a certain uh, development partner, that money or that debt will be paid by Kenyans. Yeah. So it must concern every Kenyan when such reports appear in our newspapers. So moving forward, the Ministry of Transport and every relevant institution should not sit on their laurels when money paid by the public is going down the drain. All right. And I would agree also with Doc that yeah. 
the moment a contractor has been given a task, an assignment, or a project, it is important that follow-up mechanisms are there. Mm. And in case uh, a ta you know, such limitations fall squarely on the shoulders of a contractor, then th we must find a way of having that contractor punished and even refund money that has been paid. Yeah. So that you know, punitive measures of punishment should be meted on individuals who take public projects very lightly. All right. Uh, allow me just to echo something that he has said. Yeah. Parliament actually has a critical role there, parliamentary uh, committee. Can actually someone, like I said, in terms of supervision, that is where the gap is from uh, the part of Kura. Can at least they have been uh, a bit more effective in doing this? And I think the one charged with the, you know, rural roads. Eh? Mm. But parliament can exercise its oversight role by summoning uh, the CEO of uh, Kura and also can I understand what is the status of the projects, what, what are the delays, what is the problem. But you see also Wananchi, the citizens must also raise these complaints through the elected representative. Yeah. For example, the MCA of Parkland should be able to raise the issues that pertain to, you know, that road, the sixth, uh, I think sixth and fifth Parkland Avenue, and also the Ring Road uh, Parkland. The issues they can raise through the relevant committee so that actually these people can be summoned and give uh, an accountability okay. uh, report on this. All right, I want us to move on to now the daily name. And on page six, the headline there is Ruto in a bid to win over MPs from Western. DP Ruto meets 19 lawmakers from ODM, NC, and Ford Kenya to discuss development issues. Now, the deputy president has been going around the country trying to woo you know, support from different parts of the country. And the interesting one was the coastal region where we saw people like Aisha Jumwa, you know, saying... It's going to be 2022. They're going to want to see Ruto in the ballot, ballot and they, they're going to support him. Where does this leave one ODM being, cost being one of the backyard? And of course, even NASA. I doubt there is any other country on earth <laughs> whose citizens are very political yeah, than, Kenya. than Kenyans. Okay. That immediately after one election, we start laying ground on strategies for the next. Even when our shoulders are suffering the weight of tasks and responsibilities that have been given by the previous ballot. Mm -hmm. Now, it is all right for the Deputy President to move across this country yeah. and meet leaders and win their support on how they can jointly implement government projects, which now is their most urgent task. As to whether that kind of traveling and meeting will translate into automatic support up to 2022, I think it's too early to make that call. Yeah, it is. I have a problem with the way we do our politics. Agreeing with him, we are constantly obsessed uh, with politics. You saw prior to August 8, people are campaigning for uh, 2017 elections by talking about 2022. Yeah. And uh, of course, as soon as we have concluded this, you even saw, you know, cheeky opinion polls coming up this week talking about 2022, barely five months after we've just concluded uh, elections, which is unfortunate. But the only thing we know in Kenya, and uh, where this story is also relevant, is that there are always political alignments and realignments that will always uh, continue. Yeah. There isn't fallout within uh, NASA and especially now focusing on the western uh, region. Mm -hmm. There is some grumbling that is uh, going on. Of course, the deputy president being a shrewd politician yeah. will quickly, of course, move in and try and benefit from this uh, fallout and try and consolidate his position. We expect this to continue. He's been actually meeting MPs, uh, you know, in his residence mm -hmm. and talking to them, of course. I hope that the conversation extends to develop and the projects that the government would want to achieve over the next four and a half years before we get to the actual elections. So that Monanchi is not shortchanged. So these initiatives, they are okay because the MPs will go and present their grievances and issues that relate to their region and what the government can do to make sure that Monanchi receives what is due to him. Yeah. But beyond that, of course, is that our obsession with more politics does not distract us from, um, uh, let me say, development and what services we are supposed to get as citizens. All right. Yeah. And you know, it's not just... NASA that is in question here, or ODM, or Ford Kenya, or ANC, or WIPA. We just saw, uh, is it during the weekend, Mike Sonko, who's the governor of Nairobi, saying people are, are having meetings at night to plot uh, a way of removing Dep Deputy Ruto from the ballot come 2022. What does this mean? Of course, they did react to this, Adan Duale reacted to this, but then does this show that there are cracks in Jubilee as well, come 2022, you know, we might be seeing a shift. 
Well, politics is planned at night and implemented <laughs> during the day. Yeah. Naturally. All over the world and especially in Africa. So there is nothing uh, problematic, mm -hmm. nothing wrong about me people meeting at night. That's the nature of politics. Yeah. The other thing is this. I have not come across a politician who is not ambitious. If such exists, then I would be glad to meet such a person, yeah. male or female. So ambition is the backbone of a politician. Now, uh, what is only raising eyebrows is what Sonko alluded to, that some people trying to you know, uh, lay plots and plans yeah. to make sure that the DP will not be on the ballot. But that's speculation. Evidence has not been adduced. Mm -hmm. And in any case, it should concern so much the deputy president than Sonko that people are plotting for such a thing. <laughs> the time will come when even uh, the issues of planning and uh, the scavenging and, and all that will be happening. Right now, Sonko's urgent task must be to deliver the whatever he promised for the residents of Nairobi. If we didn't see the 100 days. Yes. So the issue of <coughs> concerning himself about 2022 yeah. should actually not arise. Right now, Nairobi residents expect so much of Sonko. Right now, as we are speaking, just a couple of days ago, we've had drainage problems and much more. He should concentrate on that. The time for making battle formations for 2022 will come. Funny thing, now that rains have stopped, you know, the break, people would actually be fixing drains, but we're not seeing that. Al al allow me to focus and comment on, uh, on Sonko. Yeah. I'm one of those people who, uh, one of his doubters. But um, you saw him, I think it's yesterday or the day before yesterday, early in the morning, almost threatening to resign, was in Elezea Kuna, beat, you know, and all that, and uh, threatening to resign. It was simply distracting us from two things. One, you remember there was this hashtag failed, uh, you know, Sonko yeah. Nairobi governor. Mm -hmm. And there are issues in terms of Nairobi residents are crying for services that they have not seen. And they actually itemize the issues they are complaining. Drainage, garbage collection, water, you know, all these issues that he could concern himself with. Eh? The other thing was, of course, his uh, statement, uh, you know, about the night meetings, mm. which I'm sure landed him into some kind of trouble. Because if you looked at the context of the Meeting. The other speakers, uh, they, when they were, um, you know, giving their support for the deputy president, he's the one who raised this uh, particular issue and therefore may have just caused some bit of heat uh, within the coalition. I will not say that there are cracks within uh, the coalition. This is normal because there are people who, have become, who are a bit uncomfortable with the handshake, remember? Yeah. Because they are feeling it could disrupt the internal plans of uh, Jubilee, which is normal in politics. Mm. And these are things that are going to continue. But like I said, we should not allow this to distract us now in the case of Sonko mm -hmm. from the urgent task like my brother has said to deliver services to the people of Nairobi for the other elected politicians to deliver the services that the people elected them yeah. uh, to do 2022 will be there there will be so many realignments between now and 2022 we've seen actually some cheeky opinion polls yeah. uh, like the one that was released just the other day just introducing the conversation of politics we may be obsessed with that but we must remember the important thing is to deliver uh, services to the Kenyan people in terms of uh, not only the big four that the president has spoken about it, but it also at the level of the counties where we must also see uh, citizens receiving what is due to them. All right. And, and you know, you know, looking at 2013, looking at 2017, uh, Deputy President William Ruto delivered the votes for Jubilee. Do you think the central uh, you <coughs> know, community will do the same come 2022? Well, we are finding ourselves in the same hole uh, that we are accusing politicians of falling in. As to question of uh, delivering the vote, uh, yes, he delivered for Kenyatta. Mm. We are waiting to see whether he'll deliver them for himself and then other people <laughs> to help <laughs> deliver more for him. But um, we know very well that the arithmetic will change, change drastically. Mm -hmm. We are going to see new love patterns politically. Mm -hmm. We are going to see new enemies. We are going to see new ambition and new possibilities. New kids on the block are going to play a key role. Yeah. We are going to see also other new entrants. And much more, we are going to see other heavyweights fall by the side. Mm. It's just too early. All right. Maybe to respond to the same question, you asked whether the people from the Central, Central Region will reciprocate. By and large, I think so. But to agree is that Kenyan politics 
evolves overnight. So many changes happen. Coalitions actually are formed very close to the elections, yeah. and therefore it remains to be seen. If I was a politician, and I think that is what the deputy president is doing, and I have ambitions for 2022, is to build broad-based support, go to every part of the country. I'll not just bank on a particular region. Yes, there is where you come from. You call it your stronghold. But I think the best politics would be to reach out to each and every part of the country because uh, two communities will not get you there. You right. need broad-based support. And that is what a smart politician should be doing now. We're living in interesting times and, of course, an interesting country. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes. To my immediate right, Dr. Sam Kamau. He's a lecturer at Aga Khan and also a political analyst. And next to him is Javis Bigambo, who is a governance expert Thank and you. consultant.